I think it's been a lot for me, you know, it's like I've been doing these uh, things, not f like promoter, like on this sport I'm all my life, you know, uh, I become very success on this sport and I have so much knowledge and I feel like I can share with my knowledge with a lot of young generation, you know, with the young guys and uh, right now I have good opportunity to create some platform like Eagle FC and uh, give opportunity for young guys around the world. How good is Habib Nurmagomedov's promotion, Eagle FC? When you think of mixed martial arts, you immediately think of the UFC. Some people even use UFC to talk about MMA in general. Lightweight goat Habib the Eagle Nurmagomedov is trying to change that with his new promotion, Eagle FC. Even though Habib said he is not trying to compete with the UFC, I'm not here to fight with UFC Bellator or something like this. It's pretty clear that anyone opening an MMA organization inadvertently is clearly EFC is nowhere near the UFC at this point, but we're going to take a look at how it compares with the UFC, Bellator, 1FC and PFL. Habib's project is a very interesting one, and we here at Athlete Central are here to discuss just how good is Eagle FC. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Now before jumping into the comparisons, let's take a look at the origins of Eagle FC. Habib established the promotion in 2020 after he bought Guerrilla Fighting Championship for a measly $1 million. This shows just how small the organization was to start with because on an average UFC fight night, the total payout is well over a million dollars. And there are fighters that make a million dollars per fight, which is the entirety of the Guerrilla Fighting Championship's worth. So as you can imagine, it was going to be a tough turnaround for Habib to turn the Dagestan-based promotion global. When the pandemic hit, GFC was close to bankruptcy, so Nurmagomedov decided to buy the promotion and become its promoter. The lightweight GOAT said in an interview with Brett Okamoto that he wants to change the system of the promotion and make it more like the NBA or football, where it's like a team versus a team. I'm gonna create like some system like team versus team. Now, we don't know exactly what he means by this because MMA is not really a team sport, but we will see in the near future. Interestingly enough, Habib's interview does seem to back up the fact that he does not want to compete for the UFC. When he first bought the promotion, he said that he wanted to make a deal with the UFC to be broadcasted on UFC Fight Pass. He said that while other promotions want their fighters to stay there, he wants Eagle FC to be a launch pad onto the world stage. Kind of a bit like Cage Warriors is for British fighters, some might say. Several fighters like Conor McGregor, Patty Pimblett, Michael Bisping, Gegard Mousasi, Jack Hermanson, Mason Jones, Ian Gary, Dan Hardy, and Jack Shore have made their way into the UFC. While it is clear that this is the path that Cage Warriors is taking, it is a development promotion. Habib's actions seem to contradict his words a bit. Rather than taking an approach like Cage Warriors or other developmental promotions, he is signing former UFC stars a bit like promotions like Bellator and PFL. The signings of fighters like Junior Dos Santos, Rashad Evans, Ray Borg, Kevin Lee, and Diego Sanchez are very Bellator-esque. You don't see Cage Warriors making signings like that, and there's a reason for it. On the other hand, Habib did say that he wants to make the promotion global and give exposure and opportunity to fighters, showcasing them around the world. Local Russian prospects who are killers are not going to get the people watching, while these former UFC fighters who are past their prime are definitely going to get the promotion some exposure, and the fighters on the undercard will get the chance to shine under the bright lights. This need for exposure has been further shown with Habib tweeting at YouTube star Jake Paul saying that the doors of Eagle FC are always open for him and his team. Undoubtedly, Paul would get a lot of eyes on EFC so it is not a bad tactic at all. EFC made its debut on American soil very recently, and it shows that Habib was very serious about making the promotion global. Apart from making it global, Habib has made one change that has differentiated the promotion from the rest of the big promotions on the map. 
That change is the introduction of the 165-pound weight class. You know, there's so much talk about uh, the 165-pound division. Fighters have been campaigning for this weight class for so long since the gap between 155 and 170 pounds is way too big. Now EFC has it structured by 155, 165, 175, and 185. A 165-pound division will not answer all the questions. Which is a very logical move that Dana White has been stubbornly against. White even said that 165 will not be in the UFC as long as he is president. So why are you so against it, Dana? Then again, White also did once say that there would never be any women in the UFC. When are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. Now he has a massive poster of Amanda Nunez in his office. So take that statement with a grain of salt. There are so many UFC fighters who would perfectly fit into the 165-pound category, either not having a disadvantage at welterweight or killing themselves to make the lightweight limit. The question is, will Eagle FC become big enough for fighters to leave the UFC for that weight division? Kevin Lee and Diego Sanchez were cut from the UFC, so they joined the EFC. Fighters like Gilbert Burns, Colby Covington, Jorge Masvidal, Rafael Dos Anjos, Dustin Poirier, Nate Diaz, and many others would fit right into that 165-pound category. None of PFL, 1FC, or Bellator have implemented this category, but if Khabib has success with it at Eagle FC, it may become more and more common. The most important things when it comes to an MMA organization is their roster of fighters. So let's take a look at the top dogs at Eagle FC compared to the rest of the top promotions. In terms of current champions, all of them are currently Russian or Asian, as the influx of American fighters might start to take over in the future, but something tells us that the Russian prospects might actually be better equipped to claim victory. The three champions that remain at EFC from its time as Guerrilla Fighting Championship are Hanat Kovalov, who has only five fights under his belt but has fought fellow undefeated prospects on his way to a 5-0 record and an EFC Bantamweight title. And the second one is heavyweight champion Rizvan Kuniev, who has a 12-2 record but hasn't fought great competition thus far, barring his last few fights. The two former UFC fighters he has come up against, Darko Stosic and Justin Willis, he has lost to, so we see that EFC's heavyweight champ isn't really high caliber if he's losing to fighters that struggled in the UFC. Their middleweight champion, Faridun Odilov, has a 14-2 record, but again, prior to his last few fights, he has not faced tough competition. He won the GFC title right before Habib took over and has defended it twice ever since. He lost to current undefeated UFC prospect Shavkat Rachmanov in 2018, but there's no shame in that, considering how the welterweight has gone on to steamroll through the competition in the UFC thus far. EFC's welterweight champion Samandar Muradov is a very impressive 22-year-old from Tajikistan with a 7-0 record. His last two wins have been over good competition and he won the title against a way more experienced Maxim Schwetz who had a 19-3 record. We don't know how he would do against decent UFC competition though, given that the heavyweight champ Kuniev is doing really well in EFC despite losses against lower-end UFC talent. Their lightweight champ Mehdi Dakayev has a 14-2 record, beating very impressive competition on the Russian scene, but his losses come in Europe in Cage Warriors and French promotion Gladiator Fighting Arena. The fighter who has the best competition is featherweight champion Busser Mankel Abdebe Ulu, who has a 14-3 record and went on an impressive win streak in M1 before claiming the featherweight title in Eagle FC. Mansur Malkiev is the flyweight champion and he was fighting with no professional fights or fighters with losing records prior to three fights ago when he signed with EFC. He has since won the title and then defended it once and has a 10-0 record. It's clear that the level of fighters in the promotion isn't up to par with the top organizations yet, but Habib only took over one and a half years ago and has made massive changes. Maybe there are still more to come, but it is intriguing to see whether EFC will later compete with the big dogs or become a great development league for the UFC like Cage Warriors is. And that wraps up today's video on just how good is Eagle FC. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Let us know what videos you'd like to see next in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe.